Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am. And today, we are going to be making our way to the Tower of Return. But before we do... Like always, I want to talk about a few things. Number one is I farmed up a little over 70,000 runes. And the reason why is because I wanted to get four more levels into my mind um, and faith in arcane. Also, I went ahead and equipped the Lord Sworn's Greatsword with the Sacred Blade. We're going to need that for the first dungeon that we go into. And I went ahead and made some neutralizing boluses. If you don't know how to make neutralizing boluses, you're going to need herba, cave moss, and a great dragonfly head. I would farm some of that stuff up so you can make a little bit. We are going to need them today in the video. Let's go ahead and go to our map really fast. We're going to put some marker da markers down. The first one's going to be right here. Second one will be right here. Third one will be right there. Fourth one right here. And then the fifth one will be down there. We're going to level up real fast. Put two into mind. One into faith and one into arcane. This is all we're going to do. I'm not going to put any more into mind. That's it. That's all I'm putting in for the rest of the walkthrough. Faith in Arcane we'll get back to a little later. But now we're going to start working on our Dexterity, Strength, Endurance, and Vigor. We're going to put five into each of those stats and then we'll start working on Faith in Arcane again. Before we get going on the markers, we're going to come over here. We're going to get a few items. First one's going to be the Gilded Iron Shield. We're going to get some Blood Grease. And then over here, we have a pillar that's broken. If we jump over here and then we hop down, we are going to take a little bit of fall damage. Try not to hop off the ledge there. You don't want to kill yourself. Let's hop off Torrent. And he fell down. Whatever. Or he did it. He's a troll. We're going to pick up some bewitching branches. And I think the other one was a sliver of meat. The be bewitching branches will come in handy a lot later into the walkthrough. For now, we're going to fast travel back to the Church of Pilgrimage. I'll see everybody there. Let's hop on Torrent. And then we're going to start making our way... Matter of fact, real quick, let's rest right here. We're going to switch out one of our flasks. We're going to give ourselves one Cerulean flask. Let's equip it. And then we can hop on Torrent and start making our way to the first dungeon, which is going to be a catacomb. We're going to have some skeletons to deal with. That's why I put on the sacred blade. We will get back to using the Lord Sworn's great sword and the claymore. But for now, I am really enjoying the bloodhounds fang.
we can light this grace. We'll use a stone sword key to open up the fog wall here. And then sacred blade. It just makes dealing with this dungeon so much easier. We get the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 9. We'll be getting 8 here shortly. Activate the summoning pool. We're going to come over here to the right side. Grab some Grave Glove Wart 1 and 2. See if we have enough time on our sacred blade. We do not. We do not. Some more grave glove wart. We can just run to the end. Take him out, then a skeleton's gonna pop up right over here. We'll take him out as well. Pull out our bow. We're gonna shoot the pillar to turn the fire off. I'm not gonna bother using my sacred blade. No sense in wasting it. I almost forgot to kill him. Have another guy right here. So right here, these pillars, if you just jump right on them, they won't go up. You kind of have to hit them or knock into them as you're jumping. Just keep that in mind. I'll show everybody in just a minute. I just wanted to get up here. Oh, wow. Okay. That was easier than I thought. So let's, real quick, send that down. If you jump on it, oh my goodness. I'm trying to show everybody, but now it's making me look stupid. So if you just, oh my goodness. Okay, just trust me. <laughs> if you jump on it without bumping into the pillar, it's not going to go up. You kind of have to knock into it. But obviously, I don't think you'll have a problem with it. Let's heal up real quick. We're going to have a ton of skeletons spawn or come to life. Whatever you want to call it. But that's why we have Sacred Blade, right? Grab some Grave Glove Wart and the Prattling Pate. Thank you. See if I can do it this time. Awesome. Okay. So see how I just jumped on here and nothing happened? You have to kind of knock into it and it'll come up. Let's use our Cerulean Flask and then we'll take our Cerulean Flask off. We don't need it anymore. And real fast, we'll put on our Lone Wolf Ashes. It's going to come in handy in just a bit here. Okay. Did not miss any Grave Glove Wart. We're going to pull the lever. Don't forget to hit X 
so that you can roll and jump and all that good stuff. This boss is not hard, but we're going to switch to our Bloodhound's Fang again, by the way. But he's got a few attacks that can really mess you up. His first attack, he can like goop you or I'm not sure what to call it. But he is extremely weak. As you can tell, just super weak. So he has a goop that he'll shoot out at you. And it's why I brought the wolves out is so you can have them kind of get his attention. That way, if he goops you, he won't be focused on you. He'll be focused on the wolves and you can wait it out. We also got Latell, the headless, super good summon. Love Lutel. Or Lutel. I think it's Lutel. We're going to put him on. And then we're going to fast travel back to the beginning of the catacombs. Let's rest at this grace real quick. I almost ran off to... Um go fight the next boss but <laughs> we want to reallocate our flasks want to put it back to six instead of five summon in torrent and we're gonna start making our way to marker number two these guys can drop a really good spear if you want to farm them up you can. I'll probably do that off camera as always. A lot of my farming and stuff is done off camera. Light the summoning pool and then summon in Latell. We're going to fight our first Erd Tree avatar. And this Erd Tree avatar drops my two favorite tiers. Ouch. Nope. I knew it. I should have rolled away. Okay, here's where we're going to have to do some dodging. If you ever played Dark Souls 3, it's very reminiscent of the boss fight. Oh, did it again twice in a row of what is their name Prince Lothric and Lorien there we go not a hard boss but if it's your first time fighting the Ur Tree avatar it can be very difficult don't give up. There is a, um, what is it? Stake of America close by. Just don't give up. Keep trying. You will succeed. So the two tiers that we get is the Opaline Bubble Tier, which we'll equip here shortly, and the Crimson Burst Crystal Tier. Love both of them. Love them both. And I'll explain more once we equip them. Let's head to our third marker. We have some demi humans over there that are right by some smoldering butterflies. If you want some smoldering butterflies, you can farm them up right there. Hit that bat down. Right here, you can hear a female bat singing really beautiful singing it 
it's actually in Latin. A little fun fact for anybody that might be curious. That did not go the way that I wanted it to go, but that's okay. She's not that hard. She always drops a golden rune six. Grab another sliver of meat. Is there a bat up there? I don't know. It looked like there was something flying above me. Let's make our way to marker four. Grab a couple of smoldering butterflies here. Then we're gonna hop down right here. Just be really careful. I like to get off torrent when grabbing this item. This is the Eclipse Crest Heater Shield. Try to get rid of the marker. Fall down right here. And then right here. Come over to this grace. We're going to rest at it. And we're going to go into our wondrous flask of physic. We're going to put on the opaline bubble tier. What this will allow you to do is negate one attack. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be a special attack. It could be a regular attack. But if it hits you, it'll negate all the damage and you won't take any damage. Really good to have. And then the Crimson Burst Crystal Tier will slowly refill your health. Love both of these. We're going to... Put a marker right here, and then one right here, 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 and then lastly, right there. Start making our way over to these markers. Have a rat to kill right there. Be careful of the rats. They're obnoxious. As usual. Not as bad as the bats, but they can be. Be careful just running down in here. There's going to be a few perfumer knights. You want to lure them up here. Heal ourselves up real quick. Get the uh, page hood. I guess they're page knights. I'm sorry. There's a rat right there. We can use this. When I meant use this, I meant... <laughs> <laughs> drink a flask. Let's open up the door here. Grab the wing scythe. This is a really good scythe for anybody that is doing a faith build. At least starter uh, faith scythe. Or faith weapon, I guess. Up top here of this rune... There is a golden scarab. You want to kill it. Let's 
going to give us divine fortification. We're going to go inside this ever jail, but to be able to do that, we have to put a stone sword key in this statue. This boss fight can be a little tricky, but it's not too difficult. Get as many hits off as you can at the very beginning. She will power up. At least I think this is a female. Right here is where she's going to power up. Pretty sure she's immune to bleed. Pretty sure. Then she's done. She's going to give us the Radagons or Scar Seal. Sorry, Scar Seal. Radagon Scar Seal. We're going to start making our way to Marker 4. Grab a sacred tear, light the grace, and we can sit at the grace. And what we'll do is we will level up our flask. Head to marker five. Which is right here. Fall down, get rid of the marker. This is where we're going to need our neutralizing boluses. Take this guy out. Just do your best. You will be poisoned eventually in here. You can't go through here without getting poisoned. I mean, I guess maybe you could, but it'd be pretty difficult. Be careful, right over here, there is a blob that will fall down. So try not to get too close. Fell down right there. You get too close, it'll grab you, and you know the rest. We're going to fall down right here. I like to veer off to the left first, kill this rat, and then two rats are going to run to the back where that poison waterfall is. And then we only have one small rat and a big rat to deal with. That was very close. Was playing with my life. Oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to use the neutralizing bolluses. So we get the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 8. Good stuff. 
Told you we would be getting that shortly. Run, run, run. Grab some poison bloom if you want. That's how you make poison arrows and bone darts. If that's your thing. Grab some cave moss. Like I said, always be grabbing material. Always be grabbing it. You never know when you're going to need it. So down there we have three guys. We're going to try to take them out as fast as we can. No, I thought there was another Miranda flower. Ugh. Get some poison darts. The, hold on, let me use a neutralizing bolus real quick. Get rid of the poison. These mushroom guys do have a chance to drop poison mushrooms. Keep that in mind. Right here, we have a very easy boss fight. We're just gonna be fighting a really big Miranda flower. If you don't wanna summon in Latell, you don't have to, it's not really necessary. I just like to, cause I like Latell. He's such a cool summon. But overall, this is an easy boss fight. Get a critical. And it's dead. <laughs> so that easy. Very fast, easy boss fight. You get the Viridian Amber Medallion, which will boost how much stamina you have. We already have quite a bit of stamina, so it, it's not even worth putting on unless you still not comfortable with how much stamina you have. Like always, we're going to fast travel to the beginning of the cave. I'll see everybody there. Let's make our way out of this cave. I'm going to put my shield back on just in case. Let's put a few markers down. Our first marker is going to be right here. By the way, I want to apologize. I did go to this shack to see how many runes I needed to get everything so I could prep for this video. And I accidentally did a backup save where I went and visited this shack already and talked to the merchant. So you most likely will not have this marker on your map. And I want to apologize immensely for that. So I'm very sorry. And then what we want to do is come over here and put a marker down and then right over here, put a marker down. Marker over here. And then the last one will be over at the isolated merchant shack. Hop on torrent. Right here is a wandering mausoleum. The way you get them to come down is just hit these glowing skulls that are clumped up on its feet. A little bit about the wandering mausoleums is they can help you duplicate boss souls. At least I think they're called boss souls or essence or something. And the reason you, they let you do that is because every time you defeat a boss, they'll give you the option of having multiple weapons you can get from that soul or a um, spell or, or something. So if you're like, oh man, I really want that spell and I want that weapon. Okay, it's starting to come down. Once the rocks start uh, falling down, you know that the wandering mausoleums uh, coming down. But if you're like, oh man, I really want that weapon. I really want the spell two or both the weapons. Um, you're able to by coming into one of these wandering mausoleums, 
duplicating the boss soul and getting both of them. Or maybe you want to get more runes from the boss uh, soul. Maybe it gives you a ton of runes and you're like, oh man, I just need like two or three more levels. And if I duplicate this boss soul, then I'm able to get, you know, those two or three levels. You can also use it for that. You just come up to this headless body here and then you're able to duplicate the souls. We don't have any. Obviously, we did not beat a main boss which it has to be a main boss. We have beaten many bosses, just not main bosses. Oh, real quick, before I forget, we're gonna put a marker right here. That way we know that we have a wandering mausoleum that we brought down just right here. Get some glowing skulls here for some golden runes. And then, ah, wow, it didn't pop in. That's really weird. I was like, I know that there's a summoning pool right here. Activate the summoning pool, and then we'll summon in Latell. He'll keep the marionettes busy while we take out this creature right here. Take this thing out as fast as you can, because it's going to shoot off these projectiles in the air and they'll come down like missiles. Ooh, just like that. Be careful for the marionettes too. Be very careful for the marionettes. They hurt. Nope, I didn't realize there was one right there. Littell was kind of in the way. They have a chance to drop their cuckoo glintstone and their armor. I'll let Littell deal with them. Grab the ambush shard. Right here is Selen. We will be doing her quest uh, in a while. It'll be quite a while into the walkthrough before we start Selen's quest. So we'll come back here once we start Selen's quest and talk to her. Take out that other marinette. Some more over there. We're, we're not even going to bother with them. We're just going to get rid of this marker real quick. And then head over to the marker number two. And then the marker number three. And I know that they're right next to each other. But I like to make sure everybody knows where we're going. Get a Ruin 5, and then right behind this tree trunk, get a Ruin 1, get rid of that marker. Be careful for the land octopuses. They're a pain. I'm not going to fight them. I'm just coming over here for the rune two. And then peacing out. Hopefully that marker is gone. If not, we'll just get rid of it on the map once we get over to the isolated merchant's shack. We're going to light this grace and then we're going to rest at it. I want to advance time and the reason why is because if we have it at night where we're going to be going next is just going to have a ton of bats and everybody knows how I feel about that enemy.
Let's talk to this merchant and buy some items. Back already? Unusual fella, aren't we? Did this aged merchant have something that caught your eye? We're going to buy the lantern, so now we're not going to need our torch anymore. We're going to buy the three smithing stone twos, the three stone sword keys, and then finally our first lost ashes of war. Anything else you want to buy in here, you can feel free. I'm not going to. If I do, like always, I'm just going to do it off camera. Have a safe journey. Let's go into our map. Our first marker is going to be right here. Second marker is going to be about right here. Third one will be right here. And then lastly, we'll have a marker right there. Make our way to the first marker. Have another glowing skull there. So if you come up here at night, you're going to have bats over here and wolves, and it's not going to be very fun. There is a massive amount of bats over here at night. So I prefer just to make it daytime and then come over here and loot it all because half the time the wolves won't come over here and bother you. Now we're going to head up this ridge. Go to marker number two. Grab three great dragonfly heads. Hop down here for some mushrooms. Might as well take these guys out. I like to funnel them over here. Makes them much easier to kill. Oh, of course. I should have waited. We'll climb to the top here. We're about to use our first trap chest. It's not the first trap chest we've come across. Early on into the walkthrough, we did encounter one, but we didn't open it up. Oh, I should have. Yeah, I should have used my whatever. Doesn't matter. Right here is the trap chest. This is going to bring us to Landell as soon as we open it up. So let's go ahead and do that now and I'll see everybody in Landell. My bad. Maybe it's Lindell, not Landell. I don't know what I'm talking about. Obviously. Clearly, Mr. Wayne. We're going to light this grace. And then if you look ahead, you can see a guardian golem. My advice, if you don't feel confident in um, running through here and dodging his attacks, go to your talismans, put on a sacrificial twig, then just run by them. If you die, then you don't have to worry about uh, losing your runes and then going and collecting them. And you can move on. I like to just run over here, grab the item. And 
Nah, he still got me. Heal up. Run. Just keep running. Do not stop. Dodge if you have to, but run straight to this grace. Sit at it. And reset him. So if we come into the map, we can see that obviously we're not anywhere near where we were at. We're actually way at the top. And we were way down here. So we were down at the Tower of Return. And then we ended up way at the top of the map. Where we want to head now is Castle Morn Rampart. I'll see everybody over here and we'll end the video right after. Right here is a good place to end the video. I want to start by telling everybody thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the video. It really does mean a lot to me. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Go ahead and do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.